there are three significant deaf-blind women. Julia Brace, Laura Bridgman, and Helen Keller. Julia Brace was the first deaf-blind person before Laura Bridgman and Helen Keller. Julia Brace was born in Connecticut on June 13, 1807. Julia had a normal childhood. She was sent to school where she learned to read and spell. At four years and five months, she contracted typhus fever, which robbed her ability to see and hear. Even when she became blind and deaf, she still continued to speak, to express her wants and frustration. But eventually, she stopped speaking, as she was losing her ability to speak. Her other senses heightened, and she became more familiar with the sense of touch, smell, and taste. She did not have any attempts to get an education until she was 18 when she attended Hartford Asylum for the Deaf and Dumb. She died in Connecticut on August 12, 1884. Laura Bridgman was born in New Hampshire December 21st, 1829. When Bridgman was about 24 months old, she contracted scarlet fever, which robbed her of her sight, hearing, sense of smell, and nearly all of her sense of taste. When she became older, she began throwing tantrums, which they were contained by being physically overpowered. After Perkins School for the Blind was established, director Samuel Gridley Howe heard about Bridgman and wanted to educate her. Howe traveled to Hanover and talked to her family to send Bridgman to Perkins School for the Blind. Instead of continuing Bridgman's invention of sign language, he decided to teach her English. Bridgman understood that every object has its own name and was eager to learn. The names of every object she encountered She continued to learn and expand her vocabulary and communication. When she was 59, Bridgman became ill. After several weeks, she died peacefully at Perkins on May 24, 1889. Helen Keller was born on June 27, 1880 in Alabama. Keller was born healthy. When Keller was 19 months old, she contracted an illness known as brain fever. That caused Keller to have abnormally high body temperature. Due to her illness, it robbed her ability to see and hear. Keller could no longer see or hear. As Keller was growing up, she became wild and unruly. She would scream and kick when she was angry and giggle uncontrollably when she was happy. She tormented Martha. And through numerous raging tantrums, Anne Sullivan became Helen Keller's teacher in 1887. to teach Keller manners and educate her. At first, Keller was curious, then became defiant and disobedient to Sullivan. Keller finally made a connection between the name and the object. 
when Sullivan flushed water in Keller's hand and spelled water in her hand. Keller repeated the word water back to Sullivan. By nightfall, Keller learned 30 words. Keller suffered a series of strokes in 1961 and spent the last of her years of her life at her home. Click on the link to read more about these three wonderful symbolic women. Thanks for watching.